Hi dear friends, welcome back to Curious Earth. I am Dr. Mosina. Today we will see a bacterial disease condition in calves or young cattle. This calf diphtheria or necrotic laryngitis or laryngeal necrobacillosis or Barker calves. These are all the names of the same disease. So the causative organism is Fusobacterium necroforum, a gram negative, non spore forming anaerobe and this bacteria is a normal inhabitant of the elementary, respiratory and genital tract of animals. The organism is an opportunistic pathogen and it causes several necrotic conditions in animals including necrotic laryngitis. Necrotic laryngitis is an acute or chronic Fusobacterium necroforum infection of the laryngeal mucosa and cartilage of young cattle. And this disease is characterized by fever, cough, inspiratory dyspnea or strider. Strider means a noisy or high pitched sound with breathing. It occurs usually in the blockade or narrowing of the upper airways. It occurs primarily in feedlot cattle 3 to 18 months of age. However, cases can be documented in calves as young as 5 weeks and in calves as old as 24 months. Cases are seen worldwide and year round but appear to be more prevalent in fall and winter. So the etiology as we already discussed is Fusobacterium necroforum commonly isolated from laryngeal lesions of affected cattle and this bacteria is unable to penetrate intact mucous membranes. Laryngeal contact ulcers, a common finding in slaughtered cattle, are thought to provide a portal of entry for Fusobacterium necroforum. So the predisposing factors for this entry is unhygienic environmental conditions, dirty shared milk feeding vessels, dry rough grazing of forage, erupting teeth and animals suffering from other concurrent disease especially coughing which can lead to ulceration of larynx or other deficiencies may be more susceptible. susceptible. Now let us see the transmission, epidemiology and pathogenesis. Necrotic laryngitis is most common where cattle are closely confined under unsanitary conditions or in feedlots. The prevalence in feedlot calves is estimated to be 1 to 2 percentage. Most cases are sporadic and occur year round but as we already discussed this disease peaks in wind, fall and winter. Mixed upper respiratory tract infections caused by IBRT that is infectious bovine rhinotracheitis virus, para influenza 3 virus, mycoplasma or bacteria including pastorella and haemophilus. And coughing and swallowing associated with these infections predispose feedlot cattle to develop laryngeal contact ulcers. These ulcers on the vocal processes and medial ankles of arachnoid cartilages are thought to provide a portal of entry for Fusobacterium necroforum. After the entry, this bacteria causes inflammation, necrosis and edema in the laryngeal mucosa resulting in variable uh, narrowing of the rimaglotidis and inspiratory dyspnea and strider. If infection extends into the laryngeal cartilage, Laryngeal chondritis develops which may lead to chronically deformed larynx.
pharyngeal invasion by the organism causes discomfort characterized by painful swallowing motions and systemic signs of illness have been attributed to the exotoxin produced by fusobacterium necrophorum. Pathophysiology Infection by Fusobacterium necrophorum often follows injury to the mucosa as we already told and calf diphtheria is typically seen as ulcerative necrosis of the cheek which appears as an external swelling on the side of the mandible or a lesion on the tongue. It causes necrosis of the mucous membrane of larynx especially the lateral arachnoid cartilage and adjacent structures. Edema and inflammation of larynx occurs and visually the lesions appear as erosions progressing to ulcers and abscesses. In severe cases, cattle can die from aspiration pneumonia. So that is the pathophysiology. Then coming to the clinical findings, initially a moist painful cough is noticed and severe inspiratory dyspnea characterized by open mouth breathing with the head and neck extended and loud inspiratory strider are the common findings. Thialism that is excessive salivation, frequent painful swallowing motions, bilateral purulent nasal discharge fetid order to the breath may also be present. Now let us see some pictures of the clinical findings. Here you can see bilateral purulent nasal discharge and frothy salivation that is excessive salivation or thialism. These are the oral lesions caused in calf diphtheria. Here you can see swollen cheek and ulcerated tongue. Systemic signs may include fever of 106 degree Fahrenheit or 41.1 degree Celsius, anorexia, depression and hyperemia of the mucous membranes. Untreated calves die in 2 to 7 days from toxemia and upper airway obstruction. Long term sequel include aspiration pneumonia and permanent distortion of the larynx resulting in chronic harsh cough and inspiratory dyspnea. Now let us see the lesions. Lesions are typically located over the vocal processes and medial angles of arytenoid cartilages. Acute lesions are characterized by edema and hyperemia surrounding a necrotic ulcer in the laryngeal mucosa. Lesions may spread along the vocal cords and processes to involve the cricoarytenoidus dorsalis muscle. In chronic cases, the lesions consist of necrotic cartilage associated with a draining tract surrounded by granulation tissue.
So in here you can see uh, pharynx in calf diphtheria. There is diphtheritic membrane of fibronecrotic exudate on the pharynx. As you can see in uh, in the upper image, in the uh, in the image at the bottom, you can see tongue lesions. There is diphtheritic membrane of fibronecrotic exudate on the tongue in calf diphtheria. Here in tongue and lungs, you can see fibronecrotic exudate on the tongue and necrotic pneumonia of the lung. Also in the bottom image, you can see necrotic areas on the liver surfaces. Coming to the diagnosis of calf diphtheria, clinical signs are usually sufficient to establish a diagnosis. However, because numerous other conditions can cause signs of upper airway obstruction, larynx should be visually inspected to confirm a diagnosis. So what are the means of visual inspection of larynx? By an orally inserted speculum, laryngoscopy, endoscopy or radiography. But care must be exercised to avoid further respiratory embarrassment during the visual inspection of larynx. A tracheostomy should be performed before laryngoscopic or endoscopic examination in cattle with severe inspiratory dyspnea and the differential diagnosis include pharyngeal trauma, severe viral laryngitis as in IBRT, and actinobacillosis, laryngeal edema, abscesses, trauma, paralysis or tumor. So all these are the differential diagnosis. Now let us see the important part that is treatment and control. Different antimicrobials of choices are oxytetracycline, 11 mg per kilogram IV or subcut BID, long acting tetracyclines, 20 mg per kilogram subcut every 72 hours or procaine penicillin 22,000 in the national unit per kilogram IM BID. And non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs uh, can be given like aspirin, flunixin or ketoprofen, the doses and the routes are given here. And these are used to decrease the fever, laryngeal inflammation and edema. A single dose of dexamethasone 0.2 to 0.5 mg per kilogram IV or IM may be used to decrease laryngeal edema in animals with severe respiratory distress. A tracheostomy is indicated in cattle with severe inspiratory dyspnea, good nursing care should be provided and intravenous fluids may be required in dehydrated animals. The prognosis is good for early cases which are treated aggressively but chronic cases require surgery under general anesthesia to remove the necrotic or granulation tissue and to drain laryngeal abscesses. A 60% success rate has been reported for surgical intervention in advanced cases. There is no specific control measures for necrotic laryngitis. However, the proposed pathogenesis suggests that Control measures for common respiratory pathogens may be beneficial in this disease also. So that is all about necrotic laryngitis or calf diphtheria or Barker cuffs. If the video is informative, please like it and share it with your friends, comment your suggestions. And if you are new to this channel, please subscribe and click the notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a video. 
see you soon with another video thank you